And good morning, everybody. My name is David Lynch, and this is the Newton Falls COVID-19 update for April 26, 2020. It's the second Sunday after Easter, and we're glad to be here this morning. We update you with what's going on in Newton Falls because the governor has his press conferences, the president has his press conferences, but we have things in Newton Falls that are affecting our constituents a little bit differently than happening statewide and nationally. So we're doing this very brief COVID-19 update every single morning for the residents of Newton Falls, Ohio. And you know, things generally speaking have been going smoothly, but one thing we've talked a little bit about that we haven't focused on too much, and that is the food supply. And that's why I'm so delighted. This morning we have on the live line, Paul, excuse me, Nick Rowland. <laughs> Sorry about that, Nick. Don't know where that came from, but Nick Rowland on our live line, who is the store director at the Shop and Save on Ridge Road, right near Broad Street. Good morning, Nick. How are you this morning? Good, Dave. Happy to be here. Great. Thanks so much for coming on the line. Well, there were a lot of dire predictions as to what COVID-19 would do to the food supply chain. How is the food supply chain over at the Shop and Save in Newton Falls, Nick? Uh, speaking for our store, in specific, uh, you know, the supply chain is caught up, which we fully expected it to do. Uh, we were beat up for a while, you know, especially those first couple weeks. Uh, but, you know, even uh, in contrast to what you may hear on the news about uh, certain products here or there, um, it typically takes uh, the, the, the supply chain as a whole uh, seven days, uh, seven to ten days to catch up to things like this, and it has. Uh, it really has. You know, if you walk down the aisles, you'll see um, you'll see the necessities there. You know, you may not see. The one thing I tell people is that what manufacturers are really starting to do, um, like take Campbell's for example. You know, you you know Campbell's makes uh, say a hundred kinds of soup. You know, uh, they're not going to make a hundred kinds of soup right now. They're going to make uh, fifty. You know, instead of tomato tomato soup with rice, you're going to get just tomato soup. So, you know, manufacturers have reacted, the supply chain has reacted, um, and we're, we're in a really good spot right now. I'm really happy with, um, with where the store's at and, um, you know, supply levels of, of, you know, what people need. You know, Nick, one of the things people are worried about is because of essentials being so important to people that there might be some, be some security problems in the grocery stores. Have you had any sign of security problems in the grocery store? Uh, we've had none, uh, zero, actually. Um, and that's one of the things that, um, you know, we, we, we all talk about daily in the store of, of you know, in the retail industry, uh, things can be challenging, you know, especially in times like this, people are on edge. Um, everybody from uh, customers, employees, vendors, uh, salespeople, everybody has been so understanding, um, you know, helpful. They really, and in and, and regard, also in regards to social distancing, um, you know, people are listening. They're really uh, paying attention to, you know, staying away from other people and um, trying to respect, you know, that six foot, um, you know, that six foot guideline. And that's what's really helping things, you know. Um, it's really amazing. You know, you don't think like, you know, if you say like, oh, okay, you know, no one's going to, uh, no one's going to go for this idea or no one's going to go for that idea. You know, there's so much uh, negativity, you know, and in in, in what you're thinking of what would be, but when it actually comes to it, people are really, you know, they're taking this seriously and um, it's kind of, it's refreshing. It really is. Nick, that's outstanding. But now I'm going to raise that forbidden topic, toilet paper. What's going on with toilet paper? Uh, toilet paper, yeah. So we received, uh, what we do, we have limits on items such as toilet paper. We are limiting it to one per family. Uh, we get three main deliveries per week, and we order it, uh, we order the full boat, the, full, the whole aisle. Uh, you know, every, every SKU we carry, even SKUs we don't carry, every, every possible product that we can have, uh, you know, from our distributor, every, every truck, um, whether that gets to our store, um, is, is, is up in the air. I can tell you right now, we are fully stocked on, uh, certain brands. 
Um, other brands are having a hard time keeping up. Like I could, like, um, you know, I could say, you know, Hey, we got a full, uh, full shelf of quilted Northern. Um, but Charmin is just, uh, they're just behind, you know, they just sure. can't get us the, the product we need. So yeah, like I said, you know, you, 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 you're not going to see, you're not going to see that, you know, every, <laughs> every variety, every yeah. brand, you know, out there, but you are going to have something on the shelf, Yeah, you know. Oh, that, that, uh, it is great relief, you know. Uh, there were so many stories when the COVID-19 first began to persist that it's great to hear that you guys are keeping up. Nick, the other thing I'd ask you about is, I've seen a couple of Facebook posts. Uh, are you guys going to a program of insisting that the customers are wearing masks? Uh, at this time, we're not. Okay. So we, we we've had a couple we've had a couple employees actually. Uh, we we've had people wearing masks in the store uh, that were employees, and we, um, you know, provided from our our actual uh, you know we're a uh, we're a union store. The union provided employees masks. Um, I will say, it's very very tough to get through an entire day of work in a grocery store uh, wearing a mask for eight hours a day mm-hmm. um, because you, you know, it's, it, 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 you're working, you are, you are working. It, it's, yeah. it, it's labor. It's you're breathing um, heavy. You're breathing heavy. You, you're right. You know, um, not saying it's impossible, but um, right now uh, where we're at, uh, we're not going to make anybody, uh, wear anything uh, for, at our level. If that comes down from the top, then obviously we'll have to react differently. Sure. Um, but right now, no, we, we are not at that point. Well, I want to let people know they can call the shop in Save Newton Falls at 330-872-5181. And Nick, uh, it gives us a great sense of confidence to know that you're at the helm steering us through this difficult time. Uh, there's perhaps no service more than providing the foodstuffs and essentials for our citizens right here within the confines of Newton Falls. So, Nick, thank you to you, and thanks to your whole family. Peace and good health to you. Thanks, Dave. Same to you. All right, that was Nick Rowland, who is the store director over at the Newton Falls Shop and Save. I want to mention to you, if you're concerned that you think you need to have a mask before you go out, and I think you should before you go into a store, you can contact the city manager's office and we will send you a mask at zero cost. The number is 330-872-0806. And we have already sent out a number of masks. Doesn't cost you anything. We want you to feel comfortable when you go out and we want you to shield your nose and your mouth as you're out there in retail establishments. And now we are going to change directions a little bit and get ourselves in touch with Um, one of the outstanding leaders of Newton Falls uh, from the standpoint of some of the athletic issues that are coming up this spring. And when I say that, I'm talking about the grand old game of baseball. And Mr. Baseball himself, we're calling right now, John Rusko, president of Newton Falls Baseball. Hey, John, how are you this morning? A fine, beautiful Sunday. Good, how are you? Fantastic. Well, John, um, everybody in Newton Falls associates you with the game of baseball. You've played a, an essential role in resurrecting the beauty of our fields in Newton Falls, and we love the work that you've done in that regard. And now here we are right at the beginning of the baseball season, and there's no baseball. How is Mr. Baseball dealing with this problem, John? Well, it's a... It's a... I guess it's a big shock for everybody. Um, it's, I don't, I don't know. I mean, it's, you know, we were doing two days a week at the school practicing. We had a lot of kids coming out. Um, and then once we put a stop to that, you know, with everything going on. Um, and then I just got a meeting, had a meeting yesterday with the Portage County. Um, they actually pulled the plug for the softball Um so there will be no softball this year. Oh my! Um, and t-ball, there will be no t-ball. So right now, the only thing we got holding on to is baseball, um, and that decision is going to be made May 16th. Um, so I mean, it could be a, a lonely summer um, here in Newton Falls, um, which I don't know. It's kind of depressing, you know. You 
it's you're outdoors, but you know, you got to follow the guidelines too. So, yeah. Well, John, I hear it in your voice. Uh, everybody in Newton Falls knows your name. Uh, everybody in our service departments knows your name because as president of Newton Falls Baseball, you've not just been the person that's raised money and organized leagues, but you've actually gone out there and done some of the grunt work in getting these fields in their most beautified condition in years, John. And uh, it's, it's just wonderful what you've done. And to some extent, we're using this pause in things as a chance to say thank you to you. Um, I've got a feeling, John, as things loosen up, before the summer ends, you'll have some kind of baseball because, after all, uh, you can have social distancing. You know, the governor a couple of weeks ago said there's nothing wrong with people fishing. Well, you know, uh, usually all the players can organize themselves in a way that there's some distancing. So don't you have at least a little bit of optimism that some kind of baseball might take place this summer? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, we'll definitely... You know, even if it's just the teams from Newton Falls, you know, to get together and just have a game at the park. Um, we got three fields over there now with uh, lights put on them, um, thanks to Bill George and the electric company or the electric crew there and sure. here in town. Um, so we definitely want to get use out of that stuff. Um, and, and that's the biggest thing, you know, get the kids out there and get them playing a little bit. Uh, even if we put a, a little fall ball league together, um, just something to get them out there to play. Yeah, John, I think that's a good idea. The other thing is, don't you think it'd be beneficial to have at least some baseball so that the kids don't lose that inertia because obviously we want to have baseball next year too. And uh, if we completely abandon baseball, uh, my general sense of things is uh, the leagues might lose some of their inertia, some of their, their moving forward continuity. So uh, it's, uh, don't you think it's important, John, we get some kind of baseball going this year? Yeah, for sure. Um, and that's the thing we struggle with every year. You know, you kind of lose um, kids every year. They, once they get a little bit older, they kind of lose the uh, interest in playing baseball. Um, so you trying to work together with the high school teams this year to, you know, to keep the kids interested in it, you know, try to build the high school teams up too, because the, the younger kids are the ones that make the high school teams. Um, so if we can keep the younger kids involved with it and keep it interesting for them and ha let them keep having fun, you know, that's what it's all about is having fun out there. And if they keep having fun and, you know, get up to the high school, you can build a, a bigger and better team. So sure. John, before we keep them out there, before we let you go, John, um, you know, you've done so much and it's been so selfless. John, what's motivating you? Um, it's even more difficult now. It'd be easy for John Rusko to say, you know what, that's it. I really don't need to put all this energy into this anymore. What is your motivation that gets you going in the morning uh, as it relates to baseball in Newton Falls? Um, I can honestly say it's the kids. Um, just to see the, the kids out there having fun. You know, and like I said before, it's all about having fun out there. And, yeah, I can always look back on a coach that I had back when I was in Little League, and he was there every every practice. I um, I still talk to him here and there. Um, just the fun, the fun time out on the fields with your friends. Uh, to go out there and just play the game of baseball, softball, whether it be softball, baseball, have fun with your friends. And to get up there and go out there and hit the baseball. Go out there and play catch with your friends. Go to the park. Yeah, there's something magical about the, the rawhide and the, the camaraderie. Uh, the thing I love about baseball is that it is uh, not a game of intensity, so to speak. Uh, it's a game where you can have moments of relaxation right in the middle of the game, uh, and in a sense, uh, a, a cause for enjoyment. That's why they call it America's pastime. And uh, yep. your number's on the screen, John, 330-442-5504. And that's for anybody that's got a question about baseball, about signups, anything at all to do with the chance to get the kids out there. Is that right, John? Yes, that's it. Reach out to me. Um, if I don't have the answer for you, I will get the answer for you. Well, when it comes to baseball, you certainly have been the answer man. And, uh, John, just words of encouragement to you. I know that it's going to happen sooner or later this year, but on behalf of the entire community, thanks to John Rusko for the way you have 
uh, resur resurrected the grand old game. Thanks, John, and you have a great Sunday morning. All right, you too. Thank you, Dave. Okay, that was John Rusko of Newton Falls Baseball. You know, some communities have a John Rusko, and some communities don't have a John Rusko, and those are the communities where baseball dies. And God forbid that should ever happen in Newton Falls. We are a great baseball community, mostly because of people like John Rusko. Well, I want to call to mind something else that happened uh, yesterday, uh, something very inspiring. Our community and other communities got together to form a motorcade parade in order to demonstrate how much we love little Elena, who's come home three years old to be with her family. And our producer director, Tom Gregory, was able to catch a little bit of video of that beautiful parade. Hi, I'm Lindsay. And I'm Justin. And we're the parents of Elena Bredsick. And we would like to thank all of every community, but Newton Falls in general, they have started all this. Um, our first fundraiser was started by Newton Falls. It's just, it's been incredible. And it's like after Newton Falls got started, it became a domino effect. And we have had every community around us help us. It's nothing short of incredible. There's no way we could ever asked or prepared for anything anybody has done for us, and it's amazing. And there's no way we would ever be able to say thank you enough to each and every one, their families, for what they have done for us and the love and support and just being there when we need everything we can possibly get from everybody emotionally and there's just no no words for it what a beautiful parade and uh, Elena we love you that's what that parade was all about thanks to all the folks in the community that came together to support Elena and her family uh, all the police cars and police officers from Newton Falls from the Newton Falls Joint Fire District even the guys from the Newton Falls Electric Department had their bucket truck out there and uh, Mayor Klein was involved in the parade. And when you saw that interview with Elena's mom and dad, if that didn't bring a tear to your eye, and make you understand what the concept of real love is all about, well then you don't have a ticker within your chest. Uh, may the good Lord bless Elena uh, and keep her and uh, take care of her and her family. Well, that brings to a close another edition of the Newton Falls COVID-19 morning briefing here for uh, Sunday morning, uh, April 26th. I say thanks to everybody again for the parade. Wear those masks when you're at the stores. Keep yourself in prayer, not just because of COVID-19, but just because our Heavenly Father responds to us if we reach out to Him. And as I say at the end of each one of these broadcasts, God bless America and God bless the city of Newton Falls.